quite a different setting from what we're used to, but it's such a beautiful day, I wanted to get outside. So we may be competing with the sound of the wind or maybe the birds, but I want to use this kind of setting to talk about another chapter in God's Word. Psalm chapter 78. And it deals with a, a, a subject, a topic that really kind of fits things that we are dealing with in our culture. Because it talks about lessons of history and how those lessons of history need to be continually taught to each generation. We're going through a revisionist kind of culture where history is being rewritten. The problem is you can't rewrite history. You can eliminate items that you share. You can alter specifics. You can even alter application. You can hide some of those facts, but you can't change them. In the very second verse of this chapter, the statement is made, I'll utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. It's a way of stating we're not going to sugarcoat this setting or this, this teaching. And we're actually going to go through and look at the good and the bad. We're not going to pick and choose. And if you think about it, if, if we go through history, if anybody goes through history and tries to do that, I will decide what I'm going to share. They have set themselves up as the authority of what's right and what's wrong. I don't want anybody doing that for me. I don't think you would either. So in this particular setting, what is the focus? Well, the focus upon sharing those lessons of history with each generation is stated in verse 4 to begin with. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He's done. And someone said, well, yeah, but you're, you're starting with a, with a skewed, uh, skewed fact right there. You're actually focusing upon God. If I take away the idea of absolute truth, if I take away the idea of something being right or wrong, no matter what culture may say, I leave the door open for chaos that's almost unimaginable. And I think we're seeing the, maybe hope, hopefully not the tip of the iceberg, but it seems that that may be the case in the unrest that you see around the world. Take away the idea of something being absolutely right, then my word is good as, as good as your word. What I want to do is as good as you want to do, no matter who gets hurt in the process. In verse number 5, the psalmist reminds his readers that in the law of Moses, there was a command to make all of these things known to their children. Why was that significant? Verse number 6 and verse number 7. That the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. And again, we're talking about a, a standard and a, an understanding of what is right and what is wrong. What happens if you take that away? If you take that away, the end result is just like some of those other generations in Israel that did not do that. Verse 8, verse 10, and verse 11. The reason is shared that with the younger generation, that they may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in His law. They forgot His works and His wonders that He had shown them. And it goes as far back as that generation that came out of Egyptian bondage, the generation that came out of slavery that were now free. The way that they responded, verse 17 through 19, they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. They spoke against God and said, Can God actually prepare a table in the wilderness? If God doesn't give us exactly what we want, we're not going to believe in, in God. The only way that we will actually accept his statutes if he gives us everything that we demand. That almost sounds familiar to what I'm hearing and seeing on the nightly news. God actually, in spite of all of that, verse 22, they did not believe in God, did not trust in his salvation. Yet he commanded the clouds above, opened the doors of heaven, rained down man on them to eat, and blew birds into their camp, verse number 27. They ate and were well filled, verse 29, for he gave them the food. They were not deprived of their craving, verse 30. And then in verse 32, in spite of this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wondrous works. 
Therefore their days he consumed in futility and their years in fear. Finally get to the southern border of that promised land and ten of those spies that are sent in to, to spy out the land, take a look at the land, come back and say, we can't take it. The nation listens to those spies. God says for every day that they were in the land looking it over, 40 days total, you will wander in the wilderness for a total of 40 years until every adult over age of 20 that came out of Egypt, Egyptian bondage dies because of your lack of faith. The statement's made down in, in verse 36 and 37 that they flattered God with their mouth, but they lied to him with their tongue. For their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful to his covenant. We're not going to follow even though we will claim that we are. We will claim that we believe, but by, by the way that we live, it's obvious that we don't. In verse 21, verse 41, Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. They didn't remember anything. So from verse 41 over to verse number 56, They tested and provoked the Most High God, did not keep His, his testimonies, but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. Over and over again, if I forget the past, if I get, uh, forget the standard of right and wrong, I'm doomed to follow in situations and generations such as these that have turned their back on God and the situations that followed were not beneficial to them at all. What should this world be doing? Learning the lesson of what is right and what is wrong. It's not, well, what's right for you may not be right for me. Truth is truth, no matter if one acknowledges it or not. What is correct is correct. You know, we see that in every area of life, unless it comes to behavior or unless it comes to faith. Can you imagine a child going into the classroom and when he gets his exam back, pop quiz back, whatever the case may be, he goes up and argues with the teacher about the answers that the teacher has marked incorrect. The teacher says, but that is incorrect. And the student said, but that's, that's incorrect in your eyes. I think it's totally correct in mine. We don't accept that in any area of life outside of civil behavior and or religion. Why should we accept that kind of futility of mind and heart in those two categories as well? You don't want to go to a doctor that makes up things to fit him. I'll give you this. Do you have any basis for that? Well, I just think it's a good thing to do or go to a surgeon. I'm going to try something new on you that I've never tried before. In fact, you'll be in the history books or you'll be dead. Who does that? But people do it all the time when it comes to what is right, what is wrong, what God's Word says versus what it does not say. Psalm chapter 78 fits a lot of situations we face in our culture, maybe more so than some people would even like to admit. Revisionist history that's doomed to create problems. History needs to be looking at all of the details, good and bad, pro and con, things that show blessings and things that were just the opposite, and then analyzing why those things actually take place. As you enjoy the weather outside this fall, please do not forget the one that created everything that you see around you. I give thanks for that wonderful creation that the God of heaven and earth has given us. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.